Uhuru Kenyatta was sworn in as Kenya's president after elections late last year, but that didn't stop the opposition leader Raila Odinga from holding his own unauthorized inauguration, declaring himself the rightful leader. And if you're going to hold a ceremony, you need someone to officiate. That role fell to this man, Miguna Miguna, the lawyer for the opposition coalition NASA. He swore Odinga in in front of thousands of supporters. But it came at a high personal cost. Miguna was arrested, charged with treason, and then deported to Canada. Since then, a Kenyan court has reversed the ruling, and Miguna says he will now return to lead the mother of all liberation wars. Well, we're joined now by the man himself, Miguna Miguna, coming to us from Toronto. Sir, pleasure talking to you again. The mother of all liberation wars. Thank you. Tell me that's just sort of grandiose lawyer yes. talk and you don't actually mean a liberation war with violence on the streets. No, no, no not violence unless, of course, uh, the illegitimate regime in Nairobi uh, try to visit it on the people. Um, I, I'm not a, a person who speak emptily. Uh, and I think even the regime in Nairobi knows that. Uh, that is why, out of a multitude of probably a million people that were at Uhuru Park on the 30th of January, the only person they abducted at night and detained in Comunicado for one week before forcefully removing from the country is me. They know that I mean action and that I don't just talk. There is nothing I have threatened or promised or undertaken to do that I have not done. I said that Railodinga would be sworn in as the people's president on the 30th of January and that I would do it whether Railodinga liked it or not, and it was done. I then promised them that we would start a cavalcade of bonfires, uh, burning Uhuru Kenyatta's portraits because he's illegitimate all over the country. And in panic, they decided instead to abduct me and detain me without trial. When are you going back? I will be going back next month. I'm going to start my global tour at the end of this week which will take me to cities in Canada, the US, the UK, the mainland Europe, part of the Arab world, part of Africa, then back to Kenya. I should be back there by mid next month. Now, what's interesting is that we see this as a sort of David and Goliath. They charge you with treason. They kick you out of the country. You're against Kenyatta. You're against Jubilee. But the recent news lines show that you're fighting your own friends from the NRM, which you formed after NASA. You had a go at the strategist, David Ndi, and the chief executive, Norman Magaya, accusing them of overstepping their mandate and trying to usurp the leadership of the organization. Even Raila Odinga saying, hey, ignore Miguna. I have full trust in these guys. So how can we expect you to take on Kenyatta and take on Jubilee and take on this system in the mother of all liberation wars when you don't have your own house in order? Well, first of all, David D and Norman Magaya are not members of the NRM. They are members of NASA. NASA is a political outfit that fights for political power at the ballot. They did not get political power at the ballot on August 8th because Uhuru Kenyatta stole that election. Now the war is, on, is being launched by the movement, NRM Kenya, which I lead. Now NR, NRM Kenya is an organic revolutionary movement, not a political party. We are not seeking power through the ballot. We are seeking power from the people directly through the exercise of their sovereignty on the streets. That will happen. I am not fighting David D. I'm not fighting Magaya. I simply spoke the truth. Norman Magaya took 30 million shillings from Jubilee to drop the, the petition against the Nairobi governor who was not elected. That's a fact. 
Rail Odinga told me that. David D opposed Rail Odinga swearing in, in my own house. I needed to be able to set the record straight because they were celebrating after I was arrested. You see, the problem with Kenya has been that we have fought liberation struggles through deception without integrity. I have decided, and members of the NRM have decided, that this war is going to be won through honesty, through truth, through integrity, and through courage, not deception, not lies. But did so it having sting said you? that, Certainly. our enemy, our enemy is Jubilee, the regime in Nairobi, not these other people. We just needed to set the record straight in our own okay. house and then move ahead against the enemy. I, I understand that fully. And you say that the enemy is Jubilee and the em enemy is Kenyatta. But as a result of you trying to set the record straight, I'm going to go back to this again. You have the man you swore in as the people's president, yes. Raila Odinga, who's saying, don't listen to me, Guna. Yes. Don't listen to this guy. Ignore him. Doesn't that sting? Listen, you ignore me, Guna, at your own peril. Raila Odinga knows that. Uh, it is easier said than done. The youth in Nairobi, the youth in Kenya, are not going to ignore me. They listen to me. And they are not going to listen to anybody saying, ignore the person, the only person that validated Railudinga's victory, the only person that protected Railudinga from being relegated to the dustbin of history. Had Railudinga not been sworn in on January 30th, Today, we would have been singing dirges at Raila Odinga's funeral. Because of my courage, because of what I did, Raila Odinga has a lifeline politically. So there is no way that anybody is going to ignore me. I will not allow it, and NRM will not allow it. I'm interested, in, I'm interested to hear what you had to say, that you don't seek power through the ballot box and through people ex exercising their sovereignty on the streets. So let's, just, let's think this through for a second. So you believe that your group should come to power as a result of, say, a million people on the streets. What happens if Kenyatta can get a million people to support More him on the streets? So then you're just going to what? You're going to decide who well, takes over the country based on crowd sizes? Is that democratic? No. Um, I, I, I think we have to be historical here. In the 90s in the Philippines, the people power uh, chased away the dictatorship of, 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 of Marcos. It could have been earlier, but the people chased away Marcos' dictatorship on the street. In Burkina Faso, a few years ago, Compore, a dictator, was chased away by the people on the streets. It is not new. Revolutions are made on the street, not on the boardrooms, not at the ballot box. It is clear now that we cannot restore our democracy. We will not be able to restore the rule of law and the principles of constitutionalism in Kenya if we do not remove these two despots from power. And we are not going to do so through the ballot because they have captured the IBC, the Independent Electoral uh, and Boundaries Commission, that is supposed to superintend over elections. So we are not going to have credible, verifiable, transparent elections for as long as Jubilee has a stranglehold over the IBC. So then what is our next course of action? We don't want a bloodbath, but the people have the power to decide who their leaders are going to be. Uhuru Kenyatta does not control 30% of Kenyans. We know that. We saw during Jamuri Day, uh, less than uh, 1,000 people turned up to, to watch him give a speech to a complete empty uh, stadium. So we know he does not have people. So we are going to command our people to come onto the streets and to de demonstrate that power belongs to the people. Uhuru Kenyatta may decide to concede and call for fresh elections, or he can decide to take a flight to Congo. Okay. The choice is his. Miguna, Miguna, we're looking forward to following Kenya's story and your story as well. I hope you'll uh, 
talk to us again in the not-too-distant future and keep us updated on your movements. For now, thank